Hey everybody, we're here today at Dirk with Music and we're going to take a look inside the shop and see some great, great guitars and talk to the owner, Barry Witt, about uh, Gibsons and Fenders and Epiphones and all things in between. So why don't we go in and take a look? Come on, let's go. Everybody, Mike McGrims upstairs to the right music channel. I am so glad today to be in Utrecht at my good friend Barry Witt shop down here at Dirk Whip Music. Uh, guys, we are going to talk to the man himself finally. I've been telling you about him for years. Actually, I've been shopping with you, Barry, since your old shop uh, down in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he has been a good friend to me for. 20 years now I've, I've been doing business with him. He moved his shop here to Utrecht. Uh, how long ago was that? Well, I started here 10 years ago. Okay. But I moved out, uh, I think, uh, seven years ago. And then I moved back in four years ago already. Oh, so you had two, you had the location in Amsterdam also at the same time you had this location? Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What made you make the final move all the way from Amsterdam to here? Uh, it was uh, fate had to decide. Both buildings I put out for rent because I own the buildings. Okay. Right, right. And then whichever would rent out quicker yeah. would make me move to the other position. Okay. And I'm pretty glad it became Utrecht. Because now I'm out of the heat and we're really specialized guitar stores. Yeah, now. yeah. So uh, the, the stock is getting uh, much nicer and high end. So. We don't have to be on a spot where you have thousands of people walking by. Yeah. Uh, for us, it's more interesting yeah. if you if you really need to be there. Right. So if we put it, the energy in you, it's nice that you came to us instead of the so, cinema being next. Exactly. To you. So it, I like it better too, guys, because uh, before his shop was right next to a cinema, and it was a lot of, of foot traffic going there. It's like an electronic shop, cinema, and a couple of things there. But uh, one of the things that I always liked about uh, Barry's shop is that he always, always had really nice vintage guitars, really high quality. And I guess by moving down to here, you can really emphasize that and yeah. cater to I get more time to in the morning and yeah. pick up things at customers or uh, you, you need also time to build up a stock and to to make it the nicest shop possible yeah but you you know you already had a great stock yeah i tell everybody you have to keep that up eh? it's like a collector <laughs> yeah, yeah and it's for sale so i have to keep on collecting you and, and people yeah, keep exactly. on buying my <laughs> and how is that going by the way how is the how is the market in terms of, of it's that? always possible but the strange thing with vintage uh, guitars yeah. It's because the market is moving pretty quick in some areas, mm -hmm. like uh, Mustangs, uh, Jazz Masters, right, Jaguars. Right, 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 right. So you shouldn't be afraid to buy a guitar back at the price where you sold it for two years ago. And that's like, if you're into vintage guitars, the next one is a totally new chapter. Yeah. Yep, yep, and yep, yep. Uh, 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 so it's pretty strange with the strong dollar yeah. and the upgoing market to buy vintage gear because you're all the time thinking, wow. This is pretty expensive at the moment, but we're still. It still holds, and it, it still, still holds. It's yeah. still, it's a good investment. You you have a lot of famous musicians come to you from time to time. There's yeah. actually a story that I want to confirm today with you. You had Joe Bonamassa come into your shop. I sold him three guitars. I told you guys. So Joe, <laughs> there's one video I don't know if you're aware on YouTube yeah. where he's at your shop and he's he's like he's like oh they beat me up on this <laughs> but I didn't. This guy can out negotiate Joe Bonamassa. Okay, no lie. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you whenever I come down here and I have to do a deal, I'm like. Mm. I better really think and write down very carefully what I'm going to do. Because this guy is sharp, he knows his stuff. And that's one of the reasons I really like you. And uh, obviously a lot of famous folks come to you as well. Yeah. What did Joe buy from you, by the way? Uh, he bought, uh, uh, well, he, he has a lot. So uh, uh, usually when he's on tour, uh, uh, if there's a 55 Strat or a, something, then he comes home and he says, oh, I already had that one. So usually he buys things which he knows that he, he, he doesn't have. So then it either needs to be 
really special. Exceptional, okay. Uh, I sold them uh, uh, the Heritage, but it was a, a Les Paul which they made as a limited run for Gary Moore. Oh, okay. And there were only like 75 made worldwide. Okay. okay. So he knew he didn't have he doesn't, that one. He doesn't double up on things too usually. No. Well, it, it's kind of like, uh, 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 I think he has a lot of double vintage stuff. Oh yeah. Okay. But the other stuff needs to be uh, 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 Well he's actually in a position of moving things himself so yeah. he's like well let me get this I guess maybe down the road yeah. I can do something yeah. with it. Yeah. Uh, I sold him a Bond uh, that's like a, a, a 70s guitar from uh, Graphite with uh, uh, angled uh, Never uh, heard uh, fretboard. It. Okay. A very strange okay. guitar. Uh, from the James Bond movie, it's made in oh. the uh, UK. Oh, okay, okay. There were only a few made of those because okay. they were really expensive at that time. Right, so yeah, they, yeah. they they made it, and actually it failed of being a success. So uh, we still had two new old stocks. Oh wow! Um, and I sold him a Burns uh, bass six, so a six yeah. string bass. Yeah, I'm familiar with that, yeah. Also, uh, okay, so probably pretty, all these three things you would definitely yeah, know you yeah, didn't yeah, have yeah, before. Yeah, 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 kind yeah. of, you know, that's interesting. So, um, did you beat him up really though on the price? No, the, the, the reason we had the video shot yeah. was a funny story. Okay. He asked for a discount. Okay. So, but he's like Joe Bonamassa, so <laughs> <laughs> he was going to uh, have a show that evening in Carré. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I said, well, you can have a discount. Yeah. But it has to come with something else. Okay. If I give you a discount, we're going to shoot you buying it in the store. Oh, okay. And I didn't give him a big discount, but he said, well, that's a good deal. Okay. So we uh, uh, made the shot. And, it's uh, famous. And it, that's it, like the one hand washes the other. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually quite famous. And, and I've talked about it quite a bit. Everybody yeah. knows it, so yeah. it was a good deal, actually. Yeah, yeah guys, uh, seriously, um, you know, what you want to do is come down here and see this man right here what we're going to do today however he's been kind enough to allow us free reign of the store he's going to show some of his favorite things so we're going to take a walk around the store he's going to show off some things that he'd like to, to show you guys so uh, uh shall we do that yeah sure all right let's do it be welcome all right let's have it show us your favorite things here well this is one of the cabins which we have the the, the higher grade vintage stuff okay uh, this is a fully original 1960 ES345 with uh, the veritone switch there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the nice thing about the vintage gear is that it takes me quite a long time to list them. Okay. Because this came in with uh, the machine heads which weren't uh, period correct. Yeah, yeah, those are not really So I found the machine heads in Italy. I uh, they somehow in the time the veritone switch was uh, uh, removed. So I had to uh, buy a switch. Oh, okay. I had to uh, buy a knob, and uh, so this took me about like 10, 12 months to get it complete. I bought a case in the U.S. I bought a switch actually in the Netherlands and the knob. And the PAS? Our original. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So this is uh, and look at the beauty of that. Not a lot of buckle wear, and I love the the crackle oh, in I these love ones. It. I love it. When it gets this checking in this area, this this beautiful and that you can see that arm wear yeah, a little bit yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 So what this, is, a this is really pretty. What a beauty. Wow. And well, now here, folks, this is something that I am thrilled to see. An absolute marvel of a guitar. All right, so we have here a double neck guitar. Yeah. Oh, awesome. And 70s, true original, in pretty mint condition. T-tops? Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Original case. Wow. Look at this thing. I mean... May, may I? Yeah, sure. You know, you you would have the thought that these are heavy guitars, that these are boats, but actually, this one, I am surprised. Actually, I've said I've had uh, just single neck uh, that didn't have this kind of lightness to it. This is incredibly light, guys. It doesn't look, you know. And for the age, it's like no buckle wear at all. Yeah, it's it's clean. It's clean. Yeah. So just that's something super I really light. like of. Uh, the collection we have now. Yeah, this is a window of some of the uh, higher end Fender uh, gear we have. It's either master built or custom shop or real vintage, like the Jazz Bass Original 64, refin body but really done by a Rebel Relic. Yep. Uh, nice job. 
and uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, true vintage ones like this is a 72 one with a fire mark on the, the top somebody had pulled put his cigarettes on the top for many years that's the original neck yeah yeah 72 wow yeah. wow yeah. but um, uh, we do a lot more custom shop than we did in uh, our shop in Amsterdam okay. so I have about 30 back orders of uh, custom shop from the Fender customer. now Fender's opening up their custom shop here in Europe how is that going to uh, deal with you well uh, Gibson already has a yeah. garage so uh, I don't know if it's gonna uh, a lot of customers want to try out gear yeah. they want to trade gear yeah. uh, so uh, to have a shop in the higher end yeah. is always the best position because okay. uh, people that uh, buy something like this it's a, it's quite a lot of money so yeah. they want to hold it they yeah. want to know how it feels yeah. before and, and yeah. sometimes they want to get rid of their old guitar because this is going to be their new guitar so internet in that case is less of a problem okay so uh, with these uh, uh, guitars we have a lot of people that make an appointment they call and we know that they're coming on Wednesday we already take them offline because we know that somebody's here uh, okay. for Wednesday we okay. can set it up we uh, it's it's actually a, a, a uh, nicer uh, it's, it's much of, you're, you're just dealing with a few folks at a time you don't have the foot you don't have the, God knows who coming in and out and yeah and you can keep a nice stock as a result the security I imagine is, is a big plus on that. yeah, yeah. but uh, the main reason is if you have less customers in the shop you have more quality time for the customers that yeah, are coming do. in I agree and that's one of the major differences for new I like that I'm glad you brought that point and then guys that's a point that that really uh, if you want Want to have that kind of service again this is the kind of uh, operation that you want to go to absolutely absolutely all right we are here at your Gibson and we even brought out an Epiphone guys we'll get to this one in a minute but why don't we go through your Gibson well now you are verified for how many years now a long time Gibson Epiphone uh, Fender Squire dealer yeah. so dig that the shop started in 1939 so and in the beginning it was only accordions yep. and in the 60s the guitars uh, started to uh, actually just because the walls were empty yeah they put on classical guitars because it sounded better okay so that's how we got <laughs> that's how they it. got rolling yeah. wow, that's, that's crazy yeah. and now look at you i mean this guy has some of the nicest honestly i think in all of my Gibson dealings, with the exception of one I got in LA, every Gibson I've bought and sold, I think, was through you. Or, or at one point that I they've come through. Of guitars. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we, we've been yeah. through some few. And the reason I come to this guy is because, honestly, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you always have the perfect weight guitars. Hmm. And you, you can't choose. You can't choose. You, you get them shipped. Yeah. I open it. I put them on the scale because it's very important yeah. to a lot of people. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, every yeah. guitar on yeah. uh, uh, the listing has a yeah. picture of it yeah. or being on the scale. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, sometimes you're lucky. It's like this guy. No, it's not sometimes. It's like this guy is like the god of getting the perfect weight guitars. I haven't the Squire that I just got from yeah. you. Yeah. Is is actually yeah. for squires is, is incredibly light. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually that way. And uh, the Epiphones, a few of the Gibsons, they have just been perfect. The '60s uh, uh, was the last Gibson I bought from you. Was uh, '60s. Uh, well, that's uh, that's, that's '60s. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a perfect. But you though. see about 500 gram difference between uh, shipments. Eh? Yes. So we get them like close to four or even four sharp. Oh, okay. And we get them like 4.6. So there is a big gap in the same guitar, just yeah. a different piece of wood. But the thing is, is that, uh, again, you just get really nice ones. <laughs> and these right here, I'm sure, no exception. Why don't you walk us through these and tell us a little well, bit. A, a lot of the, the, the custom shop models from Gibson are uh, Murphy Lab now. Yeah. So uh, uh, you get the same aging as what Fender does, so the relicking. Yeah. Only then they have a team which is also expert. So you buy a custom shop model. Yeah. After the custom shop, it goes into the Murphy lab, yeah. and they do. They are like the master painters. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we have a really cool '64 SG, which is the heavy relic from the Murphy lab, and these are like everybody that sees it thinks it's an original one. It's really really detailed really ne wow beautiful grain on the neck here 
They even uh, were kind enough to give you a little divot here as well. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what happens in real life. Yeah, yeah, it does. In Absolutely. real life, Absolutely. you don't. No. You, you sometimes have it on a spot where you feel it, or. Uh, yeah, actually, I have one on one of mine. It lets me know where I'm at on the neck, <laughs> so it's actually good. <laughs> And then we have the ultra light etching, which I really like on the ES models. So this is uh, a 59 model, so the chumpy neck. And this is ultra light etch, so you see all the little crackle in the paint, yeah. but it's not being wow. used or wow. uh, uh, no damage on it. It's just been there all this time, and that's, that's the look that it uh, needs. Let's see that neck. You know. I, I don't know if, I, if it's because I have big mitts or not, but I'm totally comfortable with that now. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's, that's great. They reissue like the, the 59, the 61, yeah. the 64. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for everybody, there's a perfect neck. Yeah, 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 can, yeah. Uh, the nice thing is that we have most of the models we have in stock. So uh, you can, uh, uh, and I try to keep them in stock. But this has a waiting list of one and a half years. Yes. So we have to pre-order all the models, which we want, and you can't, order enough that if it sells really quick sometimes i'm out then uh, i have to wait also half a year or three months to get that and how is that but right now uh we had an earlier conversation where you said that in terms of just uh stuff coming in right now there's a, a great deal of stuff coming through yeah okay yeah okay. yeah yeah right. Especially with uh, uh, the uh, custom shop is pretty bad, but it's the same with vendor, long waiting lists. Yeah. And people were afraid during the Corona to order because they didn't know what was coming. Yeah. And then if your time window is one year or one and a half year, yeah. this is the time where you're out of stock. Uh, we didn't have that uh, uh, issue. Uh, yeah. issue. No, yeah. we were uh, we didn't cancel any orders. So we still have the same amount of guitars coming in. So it's a custom. I yeah. just sold my three pack up uh, Black Beauty, so that used to have this one. But it's the yellowish, which yeah. you see on yeah. the. Yeah. This the is one nice. thing that I think, and especially when you start getting this in the abalone, I, it really age is only going to do that. There's no way no. you can really fake no. that because even if I look no, the at the abalone, has a different yeah. character of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you see a lot yeah. of crackle around. Yep. 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 Yeah. But this is this has the buckle wear. You gotta love that. You gotta love the buckle wear on this. Oh, this is a beautiful, what year is this? Uh, 75. A 75 custom. Yeah. So we talked about these guys. So this is uh, during your Norlin era, uh, your typical, and if you look here on the side, you can see that pancake body, you can see the seam. Yeah. And I have them. That also here you feel a cap, eh? Because oh, of the yeah, pancake. because of, over yeah. time. It yeah. Yeah. This one is really nice that it's still together. Uh, in a case, again, guys, you can see that this has got a three-piece top. You know, one, two, three. So this is very typical for for the for the Norlin era guitars. It's still an awesome guitar, and we talked about this the other day, where I was saying that a lot of these guitars were heavy. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is not that. This is. I think it's uh, more than. I think it's not. four and a half sharp. Yep. And uh, and as I've said before, really. If you're interested in, in going for uh, a vintage guitar, this is really the era that you kind of need to look at because the prices on these are still reasonable. And if you find a nice example like this one right here, if I could do it, I'd walk out the store with this. To you know, it feels like a proper 335. You'll get some Epiphones. You know, and they just won't have that gravitas that this one does. But this one, it's 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 special. Yeah, and they do a great uh, job at the moment at uh, uh, the Epiphone uh, factory. They have really put up their standard a bit higher than they used to. So price-wise, it's a bit higher, but you get a lot more guitar. I, than you, uh, I agree. I was curious about this, uh, but it, even that, the Verato, uh, is, is, is pretty. It's with everything you reissue from the 60s. Yep. You will reissue it close to the original, and the original was like this. Yeah. So yep. people say, well, it feels like I'm bending yeah, it, yeah, but yeah, the original was still, still in one piece. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it's just I agree. a feeling which <laughs> I agree. Now that I've, I, you know, I when I heard about this guitar when it was first announced and the price of it came out, I thought, okay, they, 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 they're getting a little bit pricey there mm. because this, I believe, was the first thousand plus. Uh, 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 
Epiphone that I know of, uh, you know, the Matt Heatley, you know, but yeah. basically yeah. this set the the, the, the well, charts We're going to see that. more of the, uh, the, the, the price because of the wood and the transport. Epiphone prices are going up as well. So they're not well. getting any cheaper. And that's another point I always say, guys, if you're going to buy your guitars, now is the time to buy them. They're not going to get any cheaper going forward into the future. No. And that's just a fact. And a guitar like this, uh, guys, uh, this is me speaking, uh, uh, maybe Barry agrees, but these are fine investments. You really can't go wrong buying any Joe Bonamassa signature Epiphone. Because you can the, play it and your money is safe. Your money is safe. Literally, these will go up in value. It's one of the I don't know ones. how many they're going to make because he has a lot of guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even but, with his major runs, like I said, uh, even going back 10 years, uh, they are the most successful Epiphones, and, and in, in terms of a collector, you really cannot go wrong. And uh, we're a pretty big dealer, and we get like uh, uh, three pieces of this, yeah. and I might get another one uh, early mm -hmm. next year. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's four pieces on the, the amount of guitars which we sell. That's, that, that's, that's like it. really, really yeah, small. So small. That's so small. So, uh, and that's also why it's uh, uh, both. A great guitar and an investment yes. is because worldwide they don't produce so many of these. Anything else you'd like to add before we close up here? No, uh, yeah, everybody's welcome to pass by and uh, uh, let me know if uh, there's anything I can do for you. We will, of course, put the address and information in the uh, description down below, so uh, take a look at that. I want to thank That's uh, the first customer call. <laughs> thank you, man, so much for, 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 for having us in. And uh, guys, uh, stay tuned for uh, a lot more stuff from uh, Barry in the shop. We'll be coming here quite often over the years. I'm not going anywhere, and, and certainly neither is he. So Good I'm luck with your channel. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah. All righty. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.